manager here. Four days ago, I sat and passed my CISP. Woohoo! Thank God for that. In this video, I'm going to refer to the CISSP or the Certified Information Security Systems Professional as CISP. It's three steps on how to pass your CISP. And at the end, I've got a special piece of advice which uh, I think is not talked about a lot, but it's basically the uh, strategic approach to view the questions. And yeah, step one, read the study guide. This is the study guide. It has a thousand pages in it. Read it twice. The first time, just read it like a novel. Do you know, like you read Harry Potter? Just read it like that. The first pass at reading is just to absorb all the knowledge in this book. There are eight domains. You aren't going to know all of them. That's why you read it first all the way through. If you're really confident at some of your domains, you can just read the domains that you're weak at. Now, after you've done the first read through, the second read through, summarize each chapter. In this, they've already summarized the chapters. All you have to do is write a summary of that chapter. Why is that important? Because you're trying to hard code it in your brain so you remember it come the time of the exam. And this will link on to my step two. How do you know that you have successfully uh, read the book? Well, it's quite simple. You should be able to summarize all the ideas, out of all the key ideas, you should be able to summarize all the key ideas from each of these 21 chapters by rote, okay? You should have some concept of those chapters. Once you do that, you're good to go. And now you can move on to the test engine phase. Step two, it's all about the test engines. What you need to do is basically aim to complete 4,000 to 6,000 questions before you sit the real exam. And aim to do that from multiple engines. Now why, why this many and why multiple engines? You need to embed the process of going through a lot of questions. It's just like repetition is the mother of skill. It's like swinging a bat, right? You've got to do it a lot of times before you do it right. Multiple engines. Why multiple engines? Because the six questions, <clears throat> they're very, they're not like a Microsoft or Cisco exam, which you can easily memorize stuff and do it by rote. The six questions are all about understanding and applying understanding to certain situations. By tapping into multiple engines, you're increasing your chance of a wider array of questions for you to deal with. Come uh, day of the exam, you should be a lot more confident. I actually tried five engines, and then I kind of went to four, and then towards the end of my um, preparation period, I was using two uh, exam engines. It's very important. Now, when you do this test engine, what you will find, you'll make mistakes. Those mistakes are good because what's happening is those mistakes are identifying your weaknesses, your weaknesses which you will put back here. Do you know how you've summarized each chapter? Now, all the, <clears throat> all the gaps in your knowledge that has been identified through taking the quizzes, write these down, put them back in here. Iterate. Iterate. And what will happen, you'll keep building this, this summarization book. I used a exercise book and I wrote it down with pen. And I would read it going to work and coming back home. And this will build your knowledge up and cover your gaps. And the last step, skill set videos. It's really important to watch videos because videos help you uh, imbibe something in a lot more easier fashion because the videos are generally by people who really understand the um, syllabus and they're explaining it to a group of students and they do so in a very clear fashion. This will help you really concrete the fundamentals of the eight areas of CISP. In particular, the really good videos will skill set videos. They're free. Um, skill set have uploaded a bunch of videos to YouTube. Watch them twice. And then 
hunt for other videos. There's a lot of good videos out there about CISP. Now once you do this, this will really make you into a well-rounded candidate and if you're conscientious and you practice hard, you should be able to pass. See the most important part, and this is what a lot of the, and this is the stuff that you have to understand. It's, it's like, it's nuance. And nuance is reading between the lines, okay? This is not explicitly spelled out. So there's this concept called frames. A frame is a way at looking at a topic. Now in the CISP exams, there, I would like to say there are four types of frames, right? This is the CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This is management, this is technology, and this is risk. You'll have 150 questions in the real exam, and you'll have 180 minutes to pass. It's basically 1.2 minutes per question. Now, the CISP questions, people find them challenging because uh, you really need to understand these frames. Now, how? what does that mean? Basically, every time you have a question, you should be able to look at it from a management perspective, a CIA perspective, a risk perspective, and a technology perspective. If you have a straightforward question about asymmetric versus symmetric encryption, that's a tech perspective. If you have a question around the company's best approach to a security policy, that's a management perspective. If you have a question around availability versus confidentiality versus integrity, that's a CIA perspective. Um, if it's talking about uh, single loss expectancy, annual loss expectancy, that's a risk perspective. A lot of people can fail this exam if they just put the tech perspective. I'm, I come from a technical background and if I were to answer all the questions immediately with my tech hat on, I would have failed the exam. You have to really pull yourself back and try to analyze it from these frames and uh, essentially once you do all those steps before that I talked about, you really need to approach it from a, uh, I guess, a somewhat philosophical perspective and strategic perspective. And if you basically understand this, you should be able to pass the exam. Okay, now, in my own CISP journey, I took about, originally I think um, I tried to do it in three months, right? And I had booked for it in mid-November this year. And what happened when I came to mid-November, I wasn't too confident. And I, I put it off until I had the manual summary of each chapter. So all those 21 chapters, I manually wrote them down in my exercise book and then I would iterate after getting the questions wrong in the test engine and fix this baby up. So I kind of more or less finished all that stuff by the start of uh, December and so I booked for my exam in mid-December. Uh, mid so I pushed it out by about a month. So basically you should be able to pass it within three to four months if you, if you follow this approach. Thanks for watching. I hope you passed. If you found this useful, please thumbs up. You can do it.